House Republicans are in chaos after Kevin McCarthy lost his first vote and second vote, apparently, to become Speaker of the House. It means the speakership is, uh, well, that whole fight has gotten very, very interesting. Let's just say that. Uh, first, I want to show you a video here of Marjorie Taylor Greene earlier this morning, who was raging about members of her party who eventually voted against McCarthy. Take a look. As a matter of fact, I'll quote Matt Gates. He said it's exquisite. That's what he said on our conference call on Sunday. Um, but in that conference meeting there, we found out that there were several members, three in fact, that went in uh, last night and were demanding positions for themselves, demanding gavel positions, demanding uh, subcommittees, demanding for people to be taken off committees and people to be put on committees. Three, three Republicans out of our 222. I want you all to know I have not done that for myself. I haven't asked for one thing for my for myself, and I'm the only Republican that has zero committees. So you would think I would be the one in there asking for something, but I haven't done that. But I find out that it's my uh, Freedom Caucus colleagues and my supposed friends that went and did that, and they asked nothing for me. Nothing. That's what I found out in there. I am furious. Mm. You know what's funny? Like, I have not asked for anything. Because you already promised all your committee assignments. <laughs> you lunatic. Uh, but okay, she's furious. And she's mad. And oh my God, my friends. They're asking for committee assignments that I was already promised. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you support McCarthy so that I can get my committee assignments? Well, how dare you go and ask for your own? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, hilarious. Uh, so now look. Republican lawmakers have been, let's just say that there hasn't been any, any agreement on McCarthy. So it's not really a surprise that he failed to get enough members for his vote. In fact, earlier today, McCarthy noted behind closed doors that there was at least 20 members that he said were planning to vote against him. And it's why, uh, well, it's not because McCarthy doesn't want to be extreme enough. No, no, no. Marjorie Green kind of, well, she kind of addressed it right there. She, he's just not handing out enough favors to those people who want them. As CNN reports, McCarthy pledged an aggressive investigative agenda against the Biden administration that will highlight conservative priorities such as Hunter Biden's business activities. Ah, yes. And the treatment of January 6th rioters. The Wall Street Journal reported that McCarthy has also exceeded the conservative demands for a panel that would launch a far-reaching probe against, I'm sorry, alleged, an alleged politicization of the Justice Department and FBI. McCarthy also left the door to pursuing impeachment against Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. So, I mean, that sounds like a pretty extreme Republican agenda that's just going to waste all of our time for the next couple of years doing investigations over Hunter Biden's laptop, Hunter Biden's sock drawer, uh, Hunter Biden's butt crack. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to try to find. And by the way, there's probably plenty of pictures of uh, Hunter Biden's butt crack anywhere that you can look online, thanks to people trying to leak the report on Twitter. Or those pictures on Twitter. Okay, well, look, I, you can stare at it all you want, I guess. I, although I personally would advise against it. It's not that he's not extreme enough. Again, she said, ah, oh, these people are coming up there and they're, they're demanding assignments uh, for committees. Only I get the committees back. And of course, you heard from Green, she later on went on Bannon's show and named names, uh, Matt Gates, Representative Lauren Boebert, and Representative Scott Perry, um, as the members who were demanding committee seats from McCarthy. Speaking of Boebert, by the way, uh, during the meeting this morning, Boebert reportedly yelled in response to McCarthy claiming that he had earned the speakership, quote-unquote, bullshit. Okay, all right. Fun. Uh, now, following that meeting, of course, it got a little testier. Uh, first, here's Representative Scott Perry basically saying, 
Hey, look, man, uh, you don't deserve the seat. Once we get a very slim majority after we were told there was going to be this huge red wave, well, then the conversation got a little interesting. But even so, even so, what do you want? What do you want? We said, you're the guy that wants to be speaker. Tell us if you want to earn our vote, how we're going to transform this place so that there's a different outcome for the American people. Tell us how you're going to do that. Yet nothing. So finally, he said, put something down. I want to know what you want. So we did in the beginning of December. And even at that point, even at that point, there were people that said, I will not vote for Kevin McCarthy. But yet, I'm still working to try and avoid this moment that we're at right now, the whole time, the whole time. And so that's one question you should ask yourself. Instead of saying to these folks that are standing with me, why have you brought us to this point? Well, we surely haven't come here alone. There's one person that could have changed all this. Mm, oh, you see, you see, it was Kevin McCarthy the whole time. Didn't give us what we wanted. And so, of course, we were forced into, you know, not voting for him and basically throwing the entire House Republican, uh, you know, caucus into disarray. To which I say, I love conservative on conservative crime. It's the best crime. Let him fight. Let them fight. Uh, but it gets better. Following Paris speaking to the press, CNN reported McCarthy also got into a shouting match with Representative Chip Roy, with the report stating that it was a heated back and forth with Kevin McCarthy about some of the concessions that McCarthy has made. So, yeah, uh, not going well. Really not going well <laughs> for Republicans in choosing the speaker. Awesome. So, now, what, what does this mean uh, going forward? Well. That's the interesting question, right? First of all, this does not put McCarthy, even if he does end up winning the speakership, that doesn't put him in a good position. Oh, and, 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 he, and by the way, if he doesn't get the votes and the establishment somehow, uh, you know, the Republican establishment reaches out to Democrats to secure a vote, how do you think that's going to go? <laughs> right? And now, of course, you could have the situation where Democrats fold and choose somebody who claims to be a moderate Republican, but there is no such thing. And then we're basically back to, uh, you know, investigating Hunter Biden's state. Okay, well, that's ridiculous and stupid, but it's a Republican. What do you expect? Um, but you could also have the situation, and maybe you're looking positive here, is that kind of weakness could be something that if you're, you know, if you're interested in, in power, if you're interested in some sort of power sharing, uh, or at least stopping Republicans from doing the worst of their agenda, well, you could use that as leverage. And I'm talking about the Democrats specifically using that as leverage. Are they going to do so? Well, again, that depends on Democrats actually being strong as well and using McCarthy's weakness and the non-unified Republican Party as a weapon in order to, again, make them give up concessions but again, that, that's an open question and whether the Democrats are actually politically savvy enough to do so. That said, it is very uh, possible that at least this weakness will hamper Republicans' own ability to do some of these BS investigations at the very least. So I, I'm trying to be hopeful. <laughs> What's going to happen? Uh, but it is, uh, at least the drama itself is very, very fun.